to retain your employees, if you want to attract new superstar employees to your company, you have to make sure that you have some kind of balance in the workplace that you don't want to burn them out and that you show them that you care and that you support their overall well-being. Okay, so that's what this is about. Next one is the opportunity. So people want to know, can I be my best? Do I have room for growth? Where can I go from here? What opportunities do I have? So they look at career opportunities, they look at the type of training, and quality feedback. So again, now millennials, and we'll talk about millennials in a second, but millennials, more than any other generation, now value training. Before, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it was okay to get you know, hired for a job and say, hey, uh, John, yeah, here, meet Bob, go stand next to Bob, he'll show you what to do, and then in five minutes you'll be on your own. You know, that's kind of how training took place back then. But now, people more than ever expect to be better trained, right? Because we have technology, we have computers, there's all sorts of things that we can do to train people. And they want feedback. They want feedback. You know, gone are the days where we hated to be called into the boss's office because we were afraid, what are they gonna say, am I gonna get fired, <laughs> right? So if you got called into the boss's office once a year, it was scary. But imagine this, what if we started giving people more frequent feedback? First of all, we, we wouldn't be as scary anymore and we would be able to make a bigger impact, okay? One of the things that I have my clients do is, I have them do the formal annual evaluations, but I actually have them do quarterly coaching sessions with their employee. Because does it make sense to know that an employee is doing a job subpar and wait a year to tell them about it? No, that's ridiculous, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna coach them throughout the year, you can make the official annual more formal, but don't neglect that person for a year and then tell them, by the way, you've been doing a really bad job all year. Because he's just gonna look at you and say, well, why didn't you tell me 12 months ago, right? And he's right, right? So quality feedback. Benefits, this is all about security and survival. Obviously pay is important. There's been a lot of research done. Pay is usually fourth or fifth, believe it or not, in terms of why people choose to work where they work, why people stay with companies. Pay is actually fourth or fifth in most surveys, right? Because the things that matter first is, do I like the people that I work with? Am I appreciated? Do I, do I get the pat on the back and the certificates and the awards and, and do I get recognized? Right? Then the third is uh, room for improvement and growth. Then paying compensation, all that stuff is usually later on. Right? And job security. At the end of the day, people want to know how secure is it. We've gotten to a point where we know that there isn't almost such a thing as job security. I think people have come to grips and understand that now. But that doesn't mean we can't strive for that. So job security nowadays doesn't mean I'm going to employ you for the next 20 years and then I'm going to give you a gold watch. Job security today means if, I'm, if I work for you, tell me how the company is doing. Tell me what plans you have because if I see you have big plans and the company is doing well, I get a sense of job security. Right? But if you're not communicating or if I see that people are coming in and repossessing the TV, I'm going to get worried. Right? <laughs> so job security can still exist just in a different way. Communication. Communication is all about belonging. So this is critical. This is interesting. So people want to know, am I being informed? Or do they care enough to tell me what's going on? Am I being heard? And am I being involved? So again, think about the way you lead, the people that you employ. How would they rate you on this? Do they feel as though you're informing them of what's going on, how well the company's doing? Are they being heard? Do they have a voice? Do they have a way to give you feedback? And are they involved in the things that matter most in an organization? The next one is importance. And this is all about the balance, right? So you want to make sure that you look into people's family, health, wealth, and happiness and think beyond what they do for the eight hours that they clock in and clock out. You want to provide for people more. You want to have flexibility. You know, nowadays, I remember 15 years ago, when they, I was still in the hotel business 15 years ago, they, it was, they started allowing people to work from home. And that was like a big deal. Everybody wanted to work from home, right? Remember that? And companies were like really nervous. So like, how are we going to manage? How are we going to supervise? Really, the question was, how are we going to micromanage these people if they're not here, right? That's really what they were asking. And it was a big deal back then. Today, it's not a big deal, right? I mean, you need to consider things like outsourcing and uh, flexible hours 
and you need to consider letting people work you know, at their own pace and their own time. I mean, if you're hiring somebody to do a job for you and they can do it from home and they want to do it from midnight till 4 a.m., do you really care what time they do it as long as they do a good job? No, right? So be a little bit more open-minded, be a little bit more flexible, because if you, if you tailor their needs to your needs and you can find a match, what's gonna happen is you're gonna create that balance. You're gonna make them happy, they're gonna appreciate that. All right, let's talk about millennials. I know we have, I know we have a few, at least one millennial. So if you're a millennial, which means I think you were born after 1979 or 1980, raise your hand if you're a millennial. Oh. Yeah, 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 you're a millennial. yeah, okay. yeah we're all there you go. Yeah. So millennials, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of articles, blogs, issued magazines, books written on millennials, right? Everybody's like, how do we manage millennials? Everybody's like really taken back and, and confused about how to deal with millennials. Well, let me tell you a little bit about millennials. First of all, by the year 2030, millennials will outnumber boomers by 22 million. They're not going away, folks, okay? <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, computer technology, like, oh, that'll never catch on. Well, you know, millennials are gonna catch on, right? They're gonna take over. We're gonna be working for them at one point. <laughs> so it's critical that we learn to understand what drives millennials and how we can attract and retain and, and really get them to perform uh, because they're, they are different creatures. In fact, every, every generation is a little different from, the, from their predecessor, right? So we're gonna talk about millennials. How many of you wanna learn about millennials? Sure. Yeah? Great. All right, so tough to see, I apologize, but um, what this kind of shows you here is you have baby boomers, which is in this light blue color, then you have uh, the Gen Xers in the green, and then you have the Millennials in the orange, right? So basically, they asked them a bunch of questions here, and this is how important they were. So this is like 0% not important. This is like very important, right? So there were some things like here that all three generations were very close, okay? That's okay, they're very, they're very close. What I was interested in are the things that are different. So if you look at this particular question here, so Millennials are way up here, and the other two generations are here. Look at the question. Opportunity to learn and grow. That means that for millennials, it, they value that. It's more important for them than it was for us, right? I'm a Gen Xer. And so when you're building a company and you're employing millennials, one of the things that they're gonna be either saying or thinking is, what's my opportunity to learn and grow here? They're interviewing you. They're interviewing you, not just you interviewing them. So you wanna make sure that if you're trying to attract a really good millennial, talk about the opportunity. Talk about uh, the advancement and, the, and, and how you're gonna train them, how good the training is, all these different things. Um, here's another one that was a little different as well. Uh, so this was quality of manager, right? Uh, this one was, let's see, this one's a little different too. Opportunity for advancement, kind of like what we're saying here, right? So this was really just to kind of illustrate that not all generations really think the same, right? That's, what, that's why leadership needs to evolve. Your leader, if, if you're still leading people the way you were leading them 10 years ago, it's outdated, right? You have to adjust, you have to adjust. So seven values of the millennial generation. So these are the seven most important things that, that millennials strive for. And, and for the millennials in the room, if you agree, say yeah. If you disagree, please tell me. But this is, you know, the research has kind of led to this, right? So number one is enjoyment. In other, in other words, quality of life. They just don't want to live to work, okay? They want to enjoy life more than we have in the past. They, they understand the value of time and family, and they know that with all the technology and equipment and, and, and computers and everything that exists, they realize that you can get a lot of work done in a short amount of time if you leverage technology. And so they want to go off to do other things. The second is independence. Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me do it. Show me how to do it. Get out of my way. Okay? They don't want to be micromanaged. They want to be told once. They want to be given really good training. And they want to be left alone. Okay? Let me figure it out. They don't like the handholding. Number three is discovery. They like to discover new things, try new things. The world is small now. right? With YouTube and Google, all the information, it's all there. right? They, anything that anybody wants to find out, it's at our fingertips. And so, Discovery, they grew up, millennials grew up with computers and tablets. And so they're used to discovering. And you know, my daughter, who's seven, the other day she says, uh, Daddy, how do you spell? And it was like somewhere, and I'm like, I think there's a net. And she goes, 
Um, just Google it on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. It's my seven-year-old, and she's like, here, I'll Google it. You know? <laughs> the other day, she said, Siri, can you tell me how to ask? She yells at Siri now on the phone, right? So kids are used to being able to discover things. The other is give to others. Just like I give my...